We're making uh, probably our most uh, popular pie is the uh, Wagyu mince and cheese. Ooh. And I'll just let that cook down just a bit and then we'll add our red wine and all of it into the pot to cook out for a long time. Yes! Tamaki Makoto Auckland is a city for people who love to eat. In this five-part video series, we're sharing the food culture of Dominion Road, one of Auckland's go-to spots to experience traditional cuisines from all around the world. In this video, we're going behind the scenes of Auckland's best pie, a Wagyu bolognese, bechamel and two cheese concoction, created in one of the city's most respected kitchens. We share a Japanese restaurant churning out phenomenal bowls of udon and devour a sweet and sour grilled fish hot pot at a local favourite. We're hunting down Auckland's best eats. Hit subscribe and get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena. And we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We're on Dominion Road today, one of the best places to eat in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. There are 108 restaurants on this one strip of road that we're filming on. It is crazy for food. And today's video is all about some of the diversity you can find here. And we're starting with pies. And we reckon these are Auckland's best pies. Now that is a massive claim for a Kiwi to say, but we do a lot of sampling of pies and these pies are unreal. The fillings are incredible. Let's get eating. We're diving straight into this one and we're starting in the kitchen of Cazador. Cazador has been around since 1987. It's a family owned and operated business. It's both a restaurant and a delicatessen. And today it's all about pies. Pies are a national treasure and I am so pumped about this one. We're shadowing Darius Lolai today. He's the co-owner and chef of Cazador. And what pie are we making today? We're making uh, probably our most uh, popular pie is the uh, Wagyu mince and cheese. Ooh. So Kiwis are obsessed with pies, like I said before. And if there is one filling that Kiwis love, it is a mince and cheese pie. But this is like next level mince and cheese. Wagyu mince, bechamel, what sort of cheese? Uh, we've got a provolone and a um, mature gouda. Like, this is intense mince and cheese. It's gonna be a crazy good mince and cheese pie. Now, what I love about Cazador is what they're about, their ethos, and they're all about wild, or sourcing wild, organic produce and meat from New Zealand's best hunters and, and gatherers and producers. And that's, the, the, you're championing great Kiwi ingredients, right? That's right, yeah. I mean, it, it's, um, it's basically just about proper sourcing. Um, whether that's meat or vegetables, um, but you know we see ourselves as in a position to be able to make a change um, by sort of you know leading the charge or sort of the head of the trend and um, and encouraging others, be it restaurants or um, or other retail customers, to do the same. It's really exciting, and so we're at the beginning of the process here. So Darish is getting into the vegetables, chopping up carrot, uh, onion, celery. There's a bit of thyme, I think, there. Yeah. So it's basically just, you know, having spent uh, about a year and a half living in Italy and cooking in Italy, uh, I want to do, uh, you know, pay respects to, to proper cooking traditions. And so this is essentially a, um, a bolognese, but um, true bolognese from Bologna. So we're using um, uh, equal amounts of uh, Wagyu beef and uh, free range pork mince. Um, and we're going to cook that out with, um, with this base of vegetables, um, red wine, tomatoes, and really just let it cook for a long time, just let those flavours meld together, really let everything break down and become sort of one delicious, rich, tomatoey um, uh, sort of mince sauce. My mouth is literally watering. <laughs> The souped up mince and cheese pie is coming together. So the bolognese actually needs to cook for a few hours. So Darish prepared some earlier and that filling has gone into the pie base along with a dollop of bechamel and also some cheese. So there's provolone and mature gouda and then pastry top 
pastry top. top, yeah, and that's it. And now sort of signature um, tight filling, and then we push down right into the pie, so you get sort of like a domed, uh, domed filling. Awesome. It is time to get eating. So we left the kitchen. Thank you so much, mate. That was epic. Awesome. It was just epic seeing the whole process and so much love and care goes into those pies. It is going to go down a treat. I just know it. What a gorgeous pie. It's stunning to look at, it smells amazing. I've got to talk a bit about pies though. So pies in New Zealand are very, very popular. For a country of five million people, at last count, 66 million pies were sold in one year. And those pies vary dramatically. You've got your $2 gas station, mass produced pie, and then you work up to pies like this that are restaurant quality, very high grade food using top end ingredients, top end chefs to create masterpieces and this is an immensely special pie and it is a bit more expensive than say that two dollar gas station pie but when you see that effort that's gone into it we've been two hours in the kitchen seeing this getting produced you know why it's a bit more expensive you know the quality of those ingredients and speaking of ingredients i'm going to cut the thing in half and just get that cross section with all that cheese and bechamel in there Let's have a good old look at that. Oh my giddy aunt, spilling out. So you've just got that cheesy sauce and that fresh cheese there that's melted through, just spilling out of the pie. Oh. Wow. Mmm. That's heaven. There's so much flavor in that pie. The seasoning is perfect. It's not just gravy. So if you get those cheaper pies, you just get gravy and some gristle. This is so far beyond that. This is packed with flavor. Mm. That's so special. Oh, seeing the love that's gone into it in the kitchen, and then you get to taste that love. Wow, that is a truly amazing pie. I would travel a heck of a long way to eat that. Damn, it's good. We've been lucky enough to travel the world for five years filming the best food in the world for this YouTube channel. We're also very lucky to be back home in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland now and filming on places like Dominion Road. This strip is incredible. I mean, we've just gone from Auckland's best pie and now we're having a whole fish hot pot. I mean, that range of food is nuts. There's so much different stuff you can eat on this one strip of road here in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. And I can't wait to have this whole fish hot pot now. It looks super good. The thing to order at Jim's Grilled Fish is the grilled fish. And how it's served is it's deep fried, chucked into a hot pot, and the hot pot is served at the table for everyone to dive into. Now they've got all kinds. If you're into spice, I believe that their Sichuan style uh, hot pot is very popular, but there has been a lot of spice in this series so far. So we're gonna go a little off piste and go for the grilled fish with tomato. Now what you can do is also add to that hot pot. So we've got a menu here, there's vegetables, there's extra seafood and meat, tofu, noodles and whatnot. You just tick what you're after and that will get popped in with the fish to cook away on the table. <laughs> We're heading straight into the kitchen to see how this grilled fish hot pot is made up and I've got my little translator here with me. What's your name? Mingzi. Mingzi? Nice to meet you. So he's going to do a little bit of translating because my Mandarin is very poor. <laughs> It's all action in here. The chef is making up a broth. I saw a bunch of tomatoes, spring onions, things like that going in there. So that's the base for our hot pot. 
and the whole blue cod, so the whole fish just went straight into the huge wok of oil. Everything is smelling so good. Look at that. The fish is getting ladled with hot oil. Oh, this is going to be good. getting major sweet and sour vibes off of this hot pot. The tomato broth looks so rich. The the uh, fish is so fragrant. You go chef. Yes, yeah. And the chef is just putting some fresh tomatoes over the top of the fish. Oh, this is going to be epic. Mm -hmm. So our extras are being added to our hot pot. So we've got some beautiful looking kumara starch noodles and uh, some bean sprouts and I believe some tofu is coming as well. So that's going to cook away in that bubbling tomato broth. I'm kind of overwhelmed because this dish looks so spectacular. It's like a blue cod spa pool. <laughs> so you've got this twice fried whole blue cod and like a lot of uh, food cultures around the world in Chinese cuisine, a whole fish is king. So you've got this whole deep fried blue cod that's gone into this hot pot. We've added some bean sprouts, some um, fried tofu, some kumara starch, noodles which you can see here they're cooking away and we've got this sweet and sour tomato broth we'll also uh, have a bowl of rice and some fresh mustard greens which we'll add to the hot pot as it cooks away oh man holy moly that's good blue cod is a very delicate fish predominantly found in the south island of new zealand and this blue cod is sensational really quite mild flavored but it just breaks apart in your mouth and that broth oh major sweet and sour vibes so if you're a sweet and sour fan like me you are going to love this the broth has tomato sauce in it it's got rice wine vinegar it's got that tomato the fresh tomato so it's very lively, it's very zingy. The flavors in this are so good. I'm loving it. That sweet and sour kick is so good. And it's such a great way to have a whole fish. If you've not eaten much whole fish in your life, it can be a little bit intimidating, but this is a great way to do it because it's very easy to pull apart within the broth and wow, the flavors are good. This is going down a treat. excited for this next spot. We are heading to a place called Udon Works who, in my opinion, do the best udon in the whole of the city. We're off to visit Chef Satoru in his kitchen. This restaurant is great because it's very affordable. The food looks stunning, but also tastes stunning and it's pretty healthy. So it's a perfect combo for us. We come here a lot to eat heavily udon based so most of these dishes on this big menu are all with udon as their base there's a few rice dishes too we have some absolute favorites so we're going to go for our favorites to show you guys can we please have the spicy miso nikomi udon uh, pork please and the chicken katsu curry udon How are you? This kitchen is a whirlwind of activity. Behind Thomas, there's udon being thrown into boiling water. There's tempura and katsu being thrown into the hot oil to be cooked. There's so many different dishes on the go. Chef Satoru is a whirlwind. We ordered two dishes, two of our favorites. Thomas has gone for the curry udon, so he's got chicken katsu um, coming with that, so fried chicken, and this is the curry being cooked over the heat now and mine is this one it's a miso nikomi udon which is um got a really robust red miso broth with pork my katsu curry udon is coming together 
seeing as it's come together. The food here is so good, we love it. Come here a lot, this katsukari udon, I cannot get enough of, but it's so neat to be in the kitchen to show you guys and for ourselves to have a really good look at how it all comes together. Seeing those noodles come out of that giant pot, that's neat, this big sort of sock, stocking contraption to get them all out of the hot water and then straight into cold water to stop them cooking. I love this place, family owned and operated, and the food is just super traditional, it's honest, and it is damn tasty. I have ordered the spicy nikomi, spicy miso nikomi udon, and it comes with this really robust broth, which is made with red miso. I've got my udon in there, I've got chunks of, I believe, pork belly and chef cracked in a raw egg at the end and that will just cook in this really steaming hot broth. Thomas has gone for his favourite which is curry udon. He literally orders this every time we come here. He can't get enough. So he's got a pile of udon in a Japanese curry sauce and then a whole plate of chicken katsu. So that's crumbed uh, chicken thigh which has just been thrown into that hot oil. And he's got a beautiful inari sushi there as well. How stunning are these dishes? I mean, visually they're just beautiful, but having eaten it many times this dish, I know it tastes very good too. So udon are a wheat noodle, a nice big fat wheat noodle. They're made to the chef's special recipe and they are very good udon here. I love how the, the sauces that you get just coat the udon. So I've got this um, Japanese style curry, which is a very mild curry, quite thick, loaded with onions, packs a really good punch but it's not it's not spicy with chili or anything it's just nice and flavorsome mm. perfect amount of saltiness a little bit of sweetness coats that udon oh wow and then you get this side of chicken katsu so deep fried chicken covered in panko crumbs i like to just dunk it in my curry Mm. Super crispy from being deep fried, juicy chicken, and really nice when you coat it in that curry. I cannot, cannot get enough of this place. The food's unreal. Mix this bad boy up, get all of those bean sprouts and that yolky egg into that broth. All right, let's get a taste of this. Holy moly, that's so good. It's got such a deep flavor. Beautiful, robust, punchy, a little bit spicy. You can really taste that almost sweet red miso. Mm. Mm. I love the texture of the udon here. They're still almost al dente. They're bouncy, they're chewy, and they're not slimy. This is so good. Man, I can't get enough of the broth. Oh, how good is this rope of food? I mean, seriously, if you're in Tamagimi Karaokan, come and grab a pie, have a fish, and then come and have some of this, because far out, this food is epic. This is a five-part series, though, so we're showing the best of Dominion Road in five videos up and down this street so hit subscribe drop a comment down below hit that thumbs up button thank you for watching this time we hope you enjoyed it